the final part of this chapter is the Poisson distribution. A French guy, so you say his name, Poisson. When the number of successes is potentially limitless, use the Poisson probability distribution, and we see the formula there. Uh, the idea of the Poisson, it's, it's a binomial distribution, but in the case where the potential number of successes is limitless, which would never be the case um, if there were in the binomial where there's a fixed number of trials. Okay, um, so what's going on? We see the formula there and I have it on the screen. Uh, P of X equals, that's E. Uh, e, by the way, is a number. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, E raised to the negative, and that is the Greek letter lambda, which I have there. So that's E to the negative lambda times lambda to the x, all divided by x factorial. Um, and so, yeah, there you see uh, the spelling of, uh, of that Greek saying lambda, like Mary had a little lambda. Okay, E, um, if you're not familiar with that, we call E the natural number. So E is a decimal. It's kind of like pi. Uh, it's about 2.71. We don't really need to know any of that though because our calculators, any scientific calculator will have a button uh, for E, so mine is right here. So we'll use that in a moment. Okay, uh, it says, and I'll continue reading, where lambda is the average number of successes per unit. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, what the unit is because that can be tricky. Uh, the unit is typically a time interval say a minute or an hour or something else, um, but it could be any type of unit where multiple successes can occur. To find the average number of successes per unit, you might use lambda equals the total number of successes divided by the total number of units, or you might think of lambda as the expected number of successes per unit. Okay, so we're going to see uh, this idea of the unit and lambda is probably the hardest part of any Poisson distribution problem. Um, we're going to see both styles of lambda coming up. Um, by the way, this is kind of more of a side note um, than really a main focus. Uh, the standard deviation for the Poisson distribution um, sigma, it's simply the square root of lambda. So it turns out lambda itself is the variance. So you take the square root of lambda, you get the standard deviation. Kind of an interesting note. Um, okay, let's get to practice number eight. By the way, you're going to see uh, the sun kind of creeping in here in the afternoon. Um, hopefully we can avoid shadows in this video. Okay, so uh, practice number eight, it says a small business operates from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. It acquires on average 18 new clients per day. So we don't know what this business is, um, but they're open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they get about 18 new clients every day on average. So in part A, it says, what is the probability of acquiring exactly two new clients during any given hour? Okay, so let's just think about this scenario for a moment. Uh, here, um, the, um, the potential for successes uh, is limitless, right? So, you know, they acquire 18 new clients per day, right? But, you know, um, there's no limit, there's no upper limit to the number of new clients they might receive, you know, especially if maybe they're an online based company. Um, you know, they could get 100 new clients in a day or 1,000 or more, right? So, okay, there's uh, very much, very unlike the binomial where there's a fixed number of trials. All right, so to calculate the probability of acquiring exactly two new clients. So we're still going to think success and failure uh, in the Poisson. So let's, let's tackle uh, letter A. Let me slide up here, avoid that shadow. Uh, so what's going on? Um, Let's define a success. So we will define, and it'd be a lot, this would be a lot better if we were all in class together. I could say, hey, you guys, what, what do you think a success is? So a, a success 
in this case is just getting a new client. One new client is a success. Okay. Now here's the tricky part. What do you think a unit is in this question? Let me read part A again. What is the probability of acquiring exactly two new clients during any given hour? What do you think a unit will represent? And it turns out here a unit is one hour. Uh, if you go back to the description of the unit, it says the unit is typically a time interval, a minute, an hour, etc. That's what we have here. So the question gives it away during any given hour tells us that the unit is one hour. Okay. So now let's try and figure out lambda. All right. If a unit is an hour, then what is the average number of successes per unit? You would think, well, you know, I don't know. Let's read the problem. So it says um, they're open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, that's actually going to be part of our calculation. They acquire 18 new clients per day. So how many new clients on average per hour? Because it's got to be the average number per unit. How many average clients per hour do you think? Oh, I was talking about all about the next thing I wrote here was x equals 2, right? We want two successes, two new clients. OK. Now, here's our lambda. And oh, gosh, I can see oh, this is. Let me try and uh, slide over a little bit, get away. That's better. Get away from that sunlight. Let's see what we can do here. Um, they get 18 new clients per day. Why would it be divided by 10 hours? That's how many hours they're open. They're open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's 10 hours. So 18 new clients divided by 10 hours. 1.8 new clients per hour on average. So again, lambda, the number of successes per unit on average. So they would expect in any given hour you know, they're never going to get exactly 1.8 new clients, but at the end of the day, that's how it would work out. Okay. Okay. Now, finally, we know we're looking for X equals two. We want two successes during any given hour. So we can put all this into our formula. The probability of two new clients will be E raised to the lambda, uh, excuse me, E raised to the negative lambda, negative 1.8 times lambda to the x, so 1.8 to the 2, because x is 2, divided by x factorial, 2 factorial. And here, we're not going to simplify anything. We're just going to grab our calculator right here and now. And hopefully you can see it there. Maybe it's better in the sun. So I'm going to hit my E button. Oh, OK, let me just kind of lift it up. There's my E button to the negative 1.8, OK? times 1.8 squared and then I'm going to divide that by 2 factorial which I know to just be 2 and there we go 0.268 is our answer to this one okay let's go to part B what is the probability of acquiring two or fewer new clients during any given hour. OK, so we get this language or fewer, two or fewer. So whenever we see that, uh, we know we're going to probably have to calculate more than one number of successes. Uh, two or fewer. OK, so let's see. That would be two or fewer is x less than or equal to 2. Right? It could be 2, or it could be less than 2. So x less than or equal to 2. Well, I think, um, you know, we, we're just going to have to do this. There's no uh, complement or anything here. We're just going to have to go for it. Um, the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, uh, we're going to need to calculate the probability of 0. Don't forget the 0. Probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Let me see what it's like if I actually go back. Oh, gosh. This is so... Let's <laughs> It's kind of coming in at this strange angle on my desk here. 
There we go. Now we can... That it looks completely black outside of the shadow because it's focusing on the sunlight. All right, I think this will work. That's all that's on my, my page at the moment anyway. Um, so less than or equal to 2. Okay, so we'll have to do it for 0, 1, and 2. And we're just going to have to compute these one at a time. Uh, there's no there's no faster way around it. So let's start with 0. Um, luckily, we already know lambda is 1.8. So the probability of zero successes, that would be zero people, zero new clients. Okay, e to the negative 1.8 times 1.8 to the zero over zero factorial. And again, you can just grab your calculator here um, and go for it. Or you might realize, hey, zero factorial, that's one. And maybe you remember anything raised to the zero, this whole thing is one. So really all we need to calculate is e to the negative 1.8. However you do it, in this case, oh, you definitely cannot see my calculator. Okay, I'll trust you guys can do that. e to the negative 1.8 is 0. <laughs> 0. 0.165. So there's a decent chance they don't get any new clients, but fairly low. They'll probably get somebody new during any given hour. Okay. So we got the zero, we need the one. What's the probability of getting exactly one new client? Probability of one, okay, so it's still e to the negative 1.8, but now it's 1.8 to the first over one factorial, putting in our x here and here. Put that in a calculator and you should get 0 0.298. And finally, the probability Ah oh aha. Uh -huh. I was surprised that we are all of a sudden getting to the answer. Uh what was the last let me go back. What was the last piece of that? So we did the zero, we did the one. Probability of two. Hey, we already did that a moment ago in part A, 0.268. Maybe you picked up on that. We already have that number. I didn't connect those dots earlier. Okay, so we've got the 2 already. We've got the 0. We just found the 1. So 0, 1, and 2. We add them all up. We'll get the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. And here it is, 0 0.731. So those are pretty good odds um, that you're going to get two or fewer new clients during any given hour. It's pretty good. Easily over 70% of the time. Okay, then in part C, it says, what's the probability of acquiring three or more new clients? Let's take a look at that. I'm going to rotate a little bit, see if I can get more of my page in the sun. I'll see if this works out. Uh, three or more new clients. There we go. Oh, I was trying to like... Three or more new clients. X is greater than or equal to three, right? Because it could be three or four or five x greater than or equal to 3. Now here's the thing. Um, the potential for how many new clients they might get is limitless. So we can't do this the direct way. We can't start with 3 and add 4 and add 5 because we would never stop. Um, we're going to have to use a complement here. When you see that language 3 or more, you know, that's not... Uh, written maybe in a way that's immediately recognizable but we can realize hey when they say three or more that's really the same as saying at least three right three or more at least three those mean the same thing so we know that we're going to use a complement here because we could reword this as saying what's the probability of at least three okay so here's what we'll do 
say, all right, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 is a complement, 1 minus. Well, what's the opposite or the complement of greater than or equal to 3? Well, that'd be less than 3, right? But when you're dealing with discrete numbers, less than 3 is the same as less than or equal to 2. Now, normally, these are not the same thing, right? Because any decimals would be overlooked. But when you're dealing with only whole numbers, less than 3 is the same as less than or equal to 2. And we are. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is the complement for greater than or equal to 3. Well, this is great news. Because guess what? We just found this answer, 0.731. So we'll just take 1 minus, and we've already done this calculation. And there's our answer right there, 0.269. You'll see this sort of theme in the homework and things, um, you know, when, when you're doing multiple parts, that they often build up, so, right? So our answer to A here actually helped us in part B, and our answer to B really helped in the answer to part C. We are, there's hardly anything to do when in actual calculation-wise. Okay, uh, let's stop this video here, and we'll do practice number nine next.